So, for what I know, Steve Irvin, he did a lot for uh, the Animal Kingdom, right? I heard that he actually used his own money to buy land to preserve wildlife in that area of Australia. I also learned that he spent a lot of time actually rescuing alligators, I mean crocodiles, koalas, and under other animals that were injured in the wildlife, and they would bring it back, and he would help nurse it back to help them re-release it. So, for a lot of people that don't fucking know, but if you don't know this, I don't know what else to tell you, but zoos actually help animals. What most zoos actually do is that they find an animal in the wildlife that's injured or something like that, and then they bring it back to a zoo, nurse it back to health, and then they send it back. Or, from what also I know, especially in Africa, because I have some African friends, is that there's a lot of wildlife conservations in Africa, and in order to help preserve these uh, wildlife conservations, they actually have another place where you can pay to go hunt other animals. Now, the reason for this, because if you're paying to go hunt, hunt other animals, you'll be saving like two or three other lions. That's the way they see it. Not only does that country get more revenue, and depending on what country you go hunt in Africa, and this is relevant to this, yeah, it, it helps preserve the conservations in those areas. So, all these people that attack zoos and conservation conservations and hunting, like, you really need to do some homework to realize why they do this. Like, not everybody on the planet is a monster. And just recently, uh, three poachers that entered a conservation in uh, Africa illegally, they were mauled to death by lions. This was like a week ago. And they rightfully deserved it because they illegally went into that place to hunt uh, lions that should not have been hunted. They have another place for that. So I have no uh, feelings for those people that got eaten. Like, you deserved it. I'm sorry. Like, you were there illegally. They have a legal proceeding. And you should not have been hunting those animals. But it's whatever. You guys can attack me all you want. But there is legal proceedings. And there are reasons why we have these conservations. Why we have hunting. And why we have zoos. So... And for what I understand about the PETA people, is that they actually put, uh, euthanize a lot of animals. Which makes no fucking sense, especially if they're so for wildlife. It, it makes no goddamn sense. They, these are the same people that also get mad if you leave your dog outside for more than an hour. Like, I'm sorry, I, you know, I have dogs. Sometimes I'll let them go outside for a couple hours, even if it's high. I'll leave water outside, but they're an animal. I'm going to leave them outside, and they'll be in the shade. They can drink water, but after a couple hours, I'll let them back in. Even then, the PETA people will fuck, freak the fuck out. So, face, uh, face, uh, PETA faces social media backlash for criticizing Steve Irwin. And just so you know, for any of you that criticize Steve Irwin, I want you to know that Steve Irwin did more for animals than you ever fucking will. Most of us ever fucking will. So, animal rights group PETA has found itself at the center of another media storm after it criticized the deceased Australian TV conservative Steve Irwin. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, he is Australian. And isn't PETA, like, wasn't it founded in the U.S.? something to think about two different countries like maybe we should uh, let me know where PETA was founded at. like if we're two different countries we, we should probably leave ourselves out of other people's business so uh, he died in 2006 oh, oh man it was 2006 man at the age of 44 after being pierced in the heart by a stingray bar while filming an underwater documentary yeah that was a sad day like I was in shock because when I was a kid uh, Steve Irwin was my hero like I love this show, man. Like, the show actually, you know, it educated a lot of kids about animals. And I learned a lot about crocodiles watching his show. And a lot of things, the things I know about crocodiles is based on his show. So, but PETA weighed in on the animation on Twitter saying the doodle sent a dangerous, frowning message. Okay. PETA must ask who commissioned these dangerous cartoons of a man who died while harassing a stingray, dangled his baby while feeding a crocodile, wrestled wild animals who were minding their own business, the tweet said. This frowning, ignorant 
tri tribute is a slap in the face to the vast majority of people who acknowledge that bald animals are entitled to be left alone in their natural habitats. Yeah, we agree with that, but that's why they have these educational shows, is to educate people about what to do, what not to do about animals. And like I said, he actually helped a lot of animals. He actually has a whole conservation of what he paid for, and he actually helped nurse animals back to health to send them back in the wildlife. Like, he's done more for the wildlife than these fucking PETA people. Like, t just tell me, how much good has these PETA people actually do? Because I, I don't ever hear anything good about them. I don't. I never hear anything positive about these PETA people. Never. It's always just them about bitching about shit. Well, instead of bitching about shit, why not actually do something about it? You know, there's a difference. You can complain, but you can actually go and do something and make a life-changing, you know, experience. Whatever. They, I'm probably wrong, but from what I'm hearing, what I'm gathering, the PETA people haven't really done shit for wildlife. They just complain. Well, a lot of Twitter users were, users were unhappy with PETA's take on Irwin's legacy. There have been a few people who have done more for wildlife, conservative education, than the Irwin family. You owe them an apology. True. Steve Irwin and his family reclaim lands of animals and run a massive wildlife rescue. His mission was to save animals and educate people about them. I am one of many vegetarians who ripped out their hair when PETA weighs in. Shame on you. Steve Irwin was killed. Yeah, while well, harassing, blah, blah, blah. Steve Irwin dedicated his life to animal conservation. He brought attention to animals who needed protection. And he thought a generation of children, including me, the value of life, how each and every animal should be respected. Now, there's something else I want to say, right? And this is going to sound completely fucking stupid, but I just, you know, I want to say it because at the time when he died, I think I was like 16 or maybe 17, something like that. No, no, I'm pretty sure I was 18. But at the time when he died, I had no idea stingrays were deadly. Like, I didn't. Of course, you could think like, well, why are they called stingrays? The name, like, should kind of warn you off a little bit. Well, I didn't. I didn't know why they were called stingrays. You know why? Because I was born in Texas. I'm from Dallas, Texas. I never really go to the ocean that much. I've been to zoos. I've been to, you know, SeaWorld and stuff like that. I've been to the ocean. I lived in Hawaii. But, uh, and I also lived in California. But that's besides the fact. I, I had no idea stingrays rates were even deadly. But after learning, after that tragic incident with Steve Irwin, I know now, like, hey, uh, these things are fucking dangerous. I probably sh shouldn't be swimming above them. You know, this is a guy, he was uh, very professional about what he did. He knows a lot about animals, but as someone once told me, one of my high school professors told me that you can be an expert at everything, but all it takes is one mistake and it's over, which is so fucking true. It doesn't matter how much school you get. It doesn't matter how much training you get. You know, <laughs> because that's why, especially in something like the military, it, no matter how many times you train on a weapon, you have to retrain with that over and over. It doesn't matter how much of a master you are, because you can always make one mistake and it's over. So here's Steve Irwin. He's like an expert at what he does when he comes to wildlife, but he made one mistake. I love Steve Irwin. Like, like it was really tragic about what he ha what happened. And I I wish that I I actually think sometimes what the world would be like today if someone like Steve Irwin was still alive. Like what kind of TV show would he be doing? Like you know I I know it sounds selfish, but I've always been kind of curious about what would have happened if Steve Irwin didn't die that day. Cause this man, in my my opinion, his life was so short, even for being forty four. Like. When I first heard about Steve Irwin, it was at least uh, for four years total. When I first heard about him, <clears throat> like somewhere around like 14 or 15 when I first heard about him. So, yeah, I felt genuinely that this man's life was short-lived. And I, I, I just wish, I, I just wish I'd known what had happened if someone like him was still alive. And he was like one of the great people. And sadly, like sometimes great people were the first victims of fall. Steve Irwin was killed while harassing a steer. I don't want to fucking read that shit. Uh, it's just the same. They're just repeating the same shit. And like, before I go, let me give you some Steve Irwin quotes. I have no fear of losing my life. If I have to save a koala or a crocodile or a kangaroo or a snake, 
Mates, I will save it. Does that sound like an animal abuser to you? I believe that education is about being excited about something. Seeing passion and enthusiasm helps push an educational message. If I, where I live, if someone gives you a hug, it's from the heart. Yeah, I'm a thrill seeker, but cranky, <laughs> cranky. Education is the most important thing. Sadly, we live in a country where education is lacking. So fear helps me from making mistakes, but I make a lot of mistakes. It goes with like what I just said a second ago. The only animals I'm not comfortable with are parrots, but I'm learning as I go. I'm getting better and at and better at them. I really am. And I mean, reading these, it kind of it kind of breaks my heart in a way, like because this guy he seems like he was a genuinely nice guy and he really loved animals. Like this is a guy he just really loved animals. Even over here it says. Since I was a boy from this house, I was out rescuing crocodiles and snakes. My mom and dad were very passionate about that. And I was lucky enough to go along. Yeah, he is a guy that really loved animals, man. Like, he spent his own money to help animals. He would go out and save cro even crocodiles, one of the most dangerous animals to humans. <sighs> man, these PETA people, man, they're just, they're, they're fucking retarded. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I said, like, just name me one positive thing the PETA people have done, besides bitching. Like, had they, how many wildlife conservations have they done? Like, how many animals have they actually rescued? Because to be brutally honest, I never hear about that. I just hear about them bitching. But with people like Steve Irwin, I actually hear him doing something. He actually goes out and does something. There's, there's a difference between, like, words and actions. To me, actions speak louder than words. You say something, you might not mean it. So these people just wanted their three seconds of fame, but at the same time, at the same time, it's why people don't take the PETA people seriously. Guys, go fuck yourself. I mean, to the PETA people, not my, not the people watching. Go fuck yourself, PETA people. And for people like Steve Irwin or the Irwin family, like, I'm sorry you had to go through this. Not that you'll watch my video, but I'm sorry you had to listen to ignorance. So I'll see you guys later. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to bitch at me. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.